Today, attack can come from anywhere, especially from compromised system on otherwise legitimate remote networks. Attacker fight a constant battle trying to make it difficult to locate the system that control their malwares while still allowing their malware to reach these systems to receive execution instructions. All devices such as Windows, Linux computers, servers and networks devices collect large amount of data and being lagged all the time. The problem is that it's very difficult to get all of that data in one place in order to analyze it, in order to know if there is an alert or security issues that InfoSec need to do something about. SIAM provides the ability for us to have all of the data of all devices, computers, and servers are collecting no matter where they were on the network. We need to aggregate the data and look for the badness or anomaly. How do you analyze all the data you're monitoring same? This is where an information security personnel becomes unimportant because in cybersecurity is not a full-time job, it's a dozen. You need an army of qualified resources to work around the clock or you need help outside from your organizations. Cybersecurity analysts, infosec officer, or even a third-party security operations centers are someone need to look at those data analyzing the data so that when an attack does happen and we believe it will happen, they were going to able to detect that behavior very quickly in order to mitigate or reduce the damage as quickly as possible. When SIAM or detection system generates an alert, you need to investigate to determine the severity and the scope. InfoSec personnel is the first responder to identify and validate such alert to make decisions and remediate we call a triage. Every organization needs a cyber first responder that is more thorough than simply relying on a single antivirus scan which misses new malwares and doesn't detect compromised user accounts. InfoSec personnel or cybersecurity personnel investigate and endpoint activities over the network, collecting relevant data and analyzing it for malware and suspicious activity. Cybersecurity is looking at this mess and deciding which order to start restoring the system in. Cybersecurity triage is essential steps. It's faster and simpler than a complete incident response, and it is very key to prioritizing more thorough investigations. The InfoSec personnel is focused solely on efficiently sorting and prioritizing the alerts, identify the various types of security incident by understanding how attacks unfold and how to effectively respond before they get out of hand. The first step is to understand as how as much as possible about your current computing environment. Once you combine rich information about your own network with the latest global threat intelligence on where specific on attacker tools, techniques, and trends, you will achieve the effective triage. You will put your immediate focus on the types of security incidents that matters versus wasting your time on a false positive or irrelevant noise. Steps in security event triage Before you jump into an action, when a security alert detect, you need to first assess what happened. Pulling together the details of the event will help you determine if there is a real security incident or not, and if so, how you will need to respond. But often, it is frenzy of security alerts. We get caught up in process or starting jumping to conclusion without enough information. This can lead to aimless incident response, especially when machine has been contained. There are three steps security event triage process. Security teams often follow linear triaging process where one system or artifact is investigated at a time. Think of it like debugging or troubleshoot but for security incident. Step 1. Identify. Begin by identifying the artifact of incident. Here, you will be looking for the highest value targets in the attack so you can prioritize your response accordingly. Includes tasks such as network security monitoring and performing deeper investigation. So it's critical that all infected endpoints are identified as second map. Once you have gathered the key indicators of a threat through a timeline of events 
or grab the audit logs and playback recordings from your monitoring tool or sim to visualize the steps that the attacker followed in the attack. What was the entry point? Where did it go next? And after that, the third one, eradicate. With a clear understanding of the attack path, you can prioritize your response based on the highest value targets. So taking the information you gathered during triage, you can begin swiftly removing or containment of identified system and run a full scan antivirus or escalate it for a proper incident response. Ideally, triage is a fast enough to catch the incident in progress before it completes its missions. That's the ideal way to minimize damage to your system. Triaging security events is not always easy, but it can be simplified. While an establishing process is good, be sure it's not so rigid that it bogs down your system to response or paralyze your team from pivoting to follow the attacker's real path. To give your security event triage process an extra boost, you can utilize security automations and orchestrations or SOAR to handle the manual and repetitive tasks. We often think of incident response as being detailed, meticulous forensic work, looking closely at one system at a time. However, the great majority of security monitoring work can be addressed through seeing a large, more holistic picture of the state of an activity on your infrastructure, understanding where, which, and how your system are communicating with other systems and the chances being made to them can reveal attack that other security controls cannot. Threat intelligence allows you to move always from focus on vulnerabilities, exploit, and patches, and focus on the things that are actively focusing damage to your company, data confidentiality, integrity, and availability. In this short demonstration, we could see that the attack came from Philippines with the IP address of 180.190.224.203 and it is scanning the target IP of 10.1.4.44. Not all the time InfoSec or cybersecurity are looking on the threat map but instead looking on the audit logs that device generated. Like for example, prior of the attack, under the security overview, it has 29 IDEs IPS attack detected, but after it was refreshed and update, it is now 62. And we could see the trends of attack on our SIAM dashboard as it reflects an in map scanning. To understand the attack, I will extract the logs for review and reference. From the report view, we could see what are the ports on the network had been targeted. With the extracted logs and Microsoft Excel, I can filter to a specific port, intrusion name, source IP, or destination IP by having the information I had. Kung inyong nagustuhan ng video na to, paki-like and share sa inyong mga kakilala o kaibigan lalo na sa mga IT at ating palawakin ang community ng InfoSec. As always, maraming salamat, stay safe, stay secure.
Kung nais mong mapanood ang nao ng video, i-click lang ang nasa inyong screen. O bisitahin ang GCPH channel na nasa YouTube para sa kabuang videos. Like the source IP, I can narrow down based on the captured logs that seems aggregated to further investigate and get more information if there is a user account involved or data transfer activity to further check. Even if you're sure that the attacker is getting no useful information back from their scanning, if this seems to be doing a detailed and comprehensive scan of your external system, it is reasonably to intercept this as an intent to follow up the recon with the attack attempts later on. If the scanning originates from a legitimate organization network, then contact their security team if they have one or Network management personnel is usually the best approach or blocking the source address may be counterproductive and merely cause the attack to use different source address. With the information, I as InfoSec, I can start drafting my incident report for other party to take actions like network team to block the IP, incident responder to further check the endpoint, especially if the endpoint is critical asset that may hold and contain valuable information. In writing incident report, it is best to capture the detail of incident and how the analyst responds to it on what he or she did to validate it. For example, types of incident based on the threat, what host could be possible target, is there data exfiltrations or user account involved, and what is the severity. While in descriptions, it is a brief descriptions of attack. Whereas in technical details are the action taken by InfoSec or cybersecurity to validate it. And lastly, the possible recommendations to mitigate it or minimize the damage.